Hi, Kara from Health, Home, and Happiness here. I wanted to do a quick video to show you how we do our milk. I think it's called kefir. It's, you're supposed to say kefir. I always call it keeper, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so I will say it's probably supposed to be pronounced kefir. This is dairy keeper, sorry, um, that I make pretty much from when it becomes spring until through the fall because we use it often in smoothies if the kids make smoothies. I use it in my ranch dressing, which I'm gonna show you how I make ranch dressing in another video coming up soon. Um, but it's super simple, it's loaded with probiotics, and it's so good for you, it's easy. It's a super easy way to get um, animal fats, animal protein, and probiotics with less carbs because the by culturing this, um, it lowers the carb count because the little Microorganisms, that, microorganisms in it eat up the carbs. That's what they eat. So every 24 hours, um, you dump it out through a strainer. And then I change my jar every, like every time I strain it as well. So this has the little dairy kefir grains in it. They're called grains, but they aren't actually grain. They're little clumps of beneficial yeast and bacteria it's this is super easy to make and it's a really powerful probiotic i thought i thought i was going to um just make this be a super easy like meal for me and i was going to drink a quart of kefir every day and i got i got sick <laughs> um so and i we eat probiotics every day and so one quart a day is too much but I find just by having it in ranch dressing, like that little bit um, improves all of our digestion and it helps with seasonal allergies. So the my biggest motivator for making this in the spring is that I find I don't get um, like allergies to pollen. I get them really bad when the lilacs bloom here and I don't know if it's the lilacs or it's something that blooms at the same time as the lilacs. But when I eat dairy kefir every day, like even just a couple tablespoons of it, then I find I don't get that. So this that I just strained out, that's our finished product. And if you aren't going to use all of this right now, um, I just put it in a jar and I keep it in the fridge. And then these are our grains. I'm going to rinse them off just so I can show you what they're like. You don't need to rinse them off. You can just put this directly into a jar and cover it with milk and or milk and cream. If you have raw milk, um, whether it's goat milk or sheep milk or cow milk, then that's even better, but I don't have raw milk today, so I'm just using regular milk from the store. But I'm gonna rinse these off to show, to show you what they look like. So again, you don't need to rinse them. These can go directly with the, the kefir already on it, it, back into another jar for you to culture again for 24 hours, but I just wanted to show you what they look like. So, hoping, making a mess but I'm hoping you can see that. They look like little tiny cauliflowers. And if you get them, um, you can order. I got these from a friend. I got these fresh from a friend because they, they probably double, especially if you use cream. I find if you use heavy cream in while you're culturing them, um, they double pretty much every week. So you can eat, if you have too many of these, you can either share them or you can just eat them just like this. They're like little probiotic rich, delicious gummy snacks. Um, they're not sweet though. <laughs> but when you, if you order them online, um, unless, when you order them a lot online, a lot of times they'll come dehydrated. So it's like, it's this, but it's been dehydrated. And so then you have to reconstitute it depending on how they say to on the box or on the package. Or if you just ask on Facebook, if you're like in any Weston Price groups or like naturally minded groups that are local to you, um, lots of people will have these that can share. And then I think I've seen them even for sale fresh on Etsy before as well. To make your kefir, kefir, you just put your grains down in the bottom. Um, probably like way less grains than this would work. It's just the more you have, the faster it's gonna go and the stronger it's gonna be but it's definitely not precise. And then I like to just cover them with whipping cream. Of course, organic would be better. Today we have great value, Walmart brand whipping cream. Um, 
The more whipping cream you use, the faster your grains will replicate and also the less tart it will be. Then I fill about three quarters of the way up my jar. And then I use a, I use a canning lid um, you could, and I don't, I don't have it tight. I have it just like loose on there so it keeps anything from going in it. Um, and then you just leave it on your counter for 24 hours. And that's where I keep mine, right next to my sourdough starter. And then in 24 hours, you'll do what you just saw me do, which is empty it out. Um, and then this is your finished probiotic rich product. You can drink it as is if you have like a stomach of steel. But if you're just adding a little bit, um, just kind of use it as a condiment. It's fantastic in smoothies. Um, it's fantastic in ranch dressing, which I'm going to show you in a little bit how I make ranch dressing with bacon fat, egg, and then some herbs. And it's super, super simple, super easy, super delicious. The kids love it and I love like that it has the probiotics and all the animal fats in it for them. If you don't need a pint of kefir, kefir every day, like if you are only going to use maybe this much once a week because you're only using it in like very small amounts, after I add the milk and the cream to it, I'll just put it right in the fridge. And then it does take a couple days to get going again where it's making the kefir super fast. But I just let it sit out on the counter for 24 hours and then I'll add my milk and my cream. And then I find by the time I've added it a second time, um, like drain this and then added milk and cream the second time, it's back up to normal. So a lot of people will say not to ever put this in the fridge. I haven't found it to be a problem and there's really only so much of this that we're going to be able to eat, even though I feel like we eat it pretty often. Um, so your mileage may vary. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I appreciate you being here. If you've made kefir, kefir <laughs> in the past, I would love to hear about it down below, how it worked for you, um, what kind of recipes or what you use it in. Another thing that I remember that we do is I'll make popsicles, which are really just like the kefir and then berries that I blend up and then I pour it in popsicle molds and the kids eat that during the summer as well. Um, so if you use that in your sauces or wherever else you use it, I'd love to hear from you below. Thanks for joining me and we'll be back soon.